Hello friends and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cooking in the Kitchen with Amy and Bristol. Yes folks, Bristol is back this week. He got his fancy haircut. Uh, we'll see how long he lasts today. So um, with that, I am going to be doing something a little bit different this year for Easter. This is our second uh, Easter and a pandemic uh, and with the numbers the way that the numbers have been and with God knows what the premiere is going to be telling us on Friday, um, I'm planning for something a little bit different this year. So I'm going to take you along today um, to create something uh, like I said a little different for Easter. We're going to be using the quick cooker today. I'm going to be using my mix master today, which can you, there it is, my mix master. Um, and I'm actually going to be cooking something on the stovetop as well. What am I making? Several different tools as well. Well, that was the fastest Bristol. Several tools as well that I'm going to be using today, a little bit different. Um, but I'm actually going to be making pie. Okay, pie's not that different. Pie's not that different for Easter. What the hell are you talking about, Amy? Well, I'm actually going to create. Uh, and again, just to know, normally this is a one pot. This is the month of March where I said it's going to be a one pot meal. This is a one pot meal that I'm creating today, today with pie. I'm actually going to be making chicken pot pie. Now, not your traditional Easter dinner. I have to say this is normally an after Easter dinner for me or an after Thanksgiving dinner where I would take my leftover turkey and would make turkey pot pie or making something like turkey a la king. So again, something a little bit different. It's supposed to be cooler here in Ontario. Anyhow, it's only supposed to be 12. Uh, for those of us in Toronto area, uh, where we're still in gray, we could have up to five people in your back, or sorry, 10 people in your backyard. Um, so we're gonna be eating dinner outside. Uh, we're gonna be socially distanced and I have two sets of patio furniture and we're gonna put one big fire pit in the center of us, but we're gonna eat pie outside. So I'm gonna take you along today on the pie journey. We're going to be making dessert pie as well, which I've got here on the stove top, some cherries, and I'm gonna create a different version of a cherry pie with my favorite moonshine. This is a recipe actually that I found while I was in Tennessee about two years ago. Uh, it's kind of a lazy man's way of making a, a traditional cherry pie, uh, adding a kick to it. And again, this is the quick cooker that some of you may or may not have. You might have the Instant Pot. We're all friends here. We're all going to be doing the same thing. So what I'm going to start with today are two different recipes for pie dough. Okay, some of us struggle with pie dough. Some of us don't struggle with pie dough. I have my grandmother's recipe that actually uses lard. I have my mom's recipe that actually uses Crisco. And then I have a traditional uh, butter recipe and I've actually already prepared part of it and it's in the fridge. And I, again, I'm just gonna show you some different variations. So obviously the pie crust that I'm gonna be using for the cherry pie is gonna be the butter. It's kind of a sweeter, flakier. Um, and it's non-vegan, obviously, it's got butter in it. Now, the other recipe that I'm gonna be using today, which is my mom's recipe, is vegan. It actually is very basic recipes, and your mother or grandmother or great-grandmother might have the same recipe, which is just Crisco flour, and it's got salt and cold water. That's it. But we're gonna be showing some basic tools. So the pastry blender, the pastry roller, as well as the marble rolling pin. Uh, making a lattice with our pizza cutter. I used the lemon squeezer already for some lemon juice into the, into the cherries. We're gonna be using the manual food processor to chop up the chicken. So again, different tools today to create something very fast and very easy. So what I first did, and I, I just quickly wanna show you guys this because it's really cute. This, look at this handwriting. So this is my oldest daughter, who's now 21 years old. That was, that's her handwriting when she was probably about eight or nine. Um, my mom is the best pie maker ever. 
Um, and she taught Lauren how to make pies. So whenever we needed pies, mom would make them or mom and Lauren would make them or as things got old, as Lauren got older, Lauren made them. So I've saved this recipe because of her little handwriting, which I think is adorable. Some of you might not, but I think it's absolutely adorable. So um, that's the dough we're gonna start with today. We're gonna make a very simple pie. Um, so I started off with the quick cooker. So I took obviously some chicken breasts. I just took some boneless skinless chicken breasts this morning and I just threw them into the quick cooker, very, very uh, frozen, just so you know. I put them in the quick cooker for 25 minutes because they were frozen, obviously all stuck together. And I put them with just a little bit of water and then I added a few of my favorite things. Oh, they're right here. A few of my favorite things that I could not live without. So the first one being SPG. Uh, any Epicure fans out there? Epicure fans, Epicure fans? Listen, Epicure and Pampered Chef, we are like two peas in a pod. We love to work together. Uh, especially that Stacy gal, she's absolutely amazing. If anybody needs any Epicure contacts, I got two for you. Stacy here in Ontario and Sam out in Calgary. Amazing. So what I did is I just put boneless, skinless chicken into the quick cooker. I added about a cup and a half of water, putting it right on top, and then I sprinkled a little SPG. What is SPG? Salt, pepper, garlic. Can't live without it. Then I sprinkled a little bit of onion and just threw that in the quick cooker. And what was left after I pulled the boneless, skinless chicken? Now, for those of you out there that might be pescatarian or vegetarian, you could do the exact same thing with your tofu, except obviously you wouldn't cook it in your quick cooker you would probably sear it or bake it first and then add. Again, this is a really simple, fast dinner. This is an alternative to what we might be serving for Thanksgiving, for those of you who might popped on. Uh, some of you might have had turkey in the past or more importantly, you're not sure what else to serve. This is an alternative. We're making chicken pot pie. So I've got the chicken, it's now already cooked. Now I'm left with the liquid, okay? So what am I doing with the liquid? I have added, again, Epicure fans. So the garlic and onion nutritional yeast, I added some into there. I added some of the nourish broth, threw it in there as well. And then just for happenstance, I don't know if you guys have tried the savory herb, gar um, herb gravy. It's amazing. And again, I just added a tablespoon to that. So it is still in a very liquid form right now which I'm gonna thicken up here with you guys. So again, it's got a bit of the chicken that I've already cooked in here, and now I'm just gonna thicken it up. So I've got some, I've got some of the cornstarch, which again, I have used in the cherries, which I'm gonna show you guys in a minute. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of water, and I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of cornstarch to the water. How's everybody doing today? It's a weird day here at my house. Lots going on here. Lots going on here today. Uh, yeah. I just, I'm feeling kind of out of sorts. So this to me is going to be a perfect dinner. Quite hearty. It's kind of cool and gray outside. And Wednesdays are always one of my favorite days because I get to walk with my girlfriends. SVG and rosemary garlic in my roasted mushrooms for pizza. Oh yeah, I bet it was delicious, Linda. So Linda, uh, my friend Linda that just commented, uh, got from a nice friend, brought her some beautiful mushrooms and she made herself a gorgeous, gorgeous pizza. Yes, SPG, gals, if you don't have SPG in your life, you need that stuff and like I said, I have a great contact here in Ontario, Stacy, and another amazing contact out in, the, out in Calgary. Sam, I'm telling you guys, can't live without it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of the cornstarch to the liquid, and I'm just gonna thicken it up a bit. Now obviously I don't want it soupy, and I'm gonna turn my quick cooker now to sear. So the searing is actually gonna warm, yours, uh, warm it up. It was on keep warm. Now, you as well, if you don't have the quick cooker, but you have the Instant Pot version, you have the same searing function. Turn that on and it's just gonna thicken it up. And 
And so I am just stirring that up. Carol, I agree. Lots going on everywhere. Yeah, there's, there's a few stories I'm going to share with you guys tonight. It's great. Um, so I've got that going on here. And while it's going on, we're going to start chopping up the chicken. Okay? So again, I've just cooked boneless, skinless chicken. I've got my manual food processor. I know I've talked about it before, favorite feature, the fact that it's got non-slip grip. That's not gonna slip onto my cupboard. Just gonna put my very sharp blade in there. And I'm just gonna throw my chicken in the manual food processor. Okay. It is so tender that it is falling apart. Again, this can be made with tofu. This can also be made completely vegetarian. Uh, adding extra broccoli or mushrooms. Oh my goodness. There we go. And I'm just gonna chop up my chicken. starch to that and allow that to get thick it smells amazing because of the seasonings like I said really simple here okay so I'm just gonna continue to chop up my chicken in a second I'm gonna throw that in there so let's actually start with the pie dough while that's thickening up let me just give that one more check. Yeah, so there you can see there, it's gotten a little thicker. So I'm gonna to toss in the chicken. Then I'm just gonna break up. The pieces are very, very, very tender, so I'm not even gonna bother with this piece with the manual food processor. and stir that up. Now the chicken has been seasoned, like I said, the same way. So it had a little bit of SPG in it and it had some uh, extra garlic I added in there and the three onion. And I am just gonna show you there the nice of that. Okay, so really simple. That was done in 25 minutes and already pre-seasoned between the gravy and the chicken. So it's fabulous. And Bristol's missing out on the chicken. And then I'm just gonna add a vegetable medley. So this is one of my favorite medleys. Um, it's the President's Choice that you can see there. And I, excuse me, I always add mine um, frozen, completely frozen. I just like the little bit of extra um, moisture that it's gonna give. It doesn't actually change the flavor, but I do like it to, I put it in frozen so that I do get the flavoring as it starts to thaw with the chicken and the broth. And again, if this was a normal Thanksgiving, this isn't Thanksgiving, Easter dinner, if this was a normal Easter dinner, obviously I would already have the carrots uh, I might have broccoli, um, there might be peas cooked. I know in some families there wouldn't be peas cooked at all. Um, but there might be beans cooked. So that's what's actually fabulous about this, is that whatever leftover vegetables that you would have, I throw it into the pot. That's actually my favorite thing about this dish, is that I simply can throw whatever I need to in it. So with this medley, it comes the green beans, like a whole green bean, no peas, yeah, we know Barb. The carrots, and actually give Barb, you can see hanging on the carrot is peas. So it's got peas, corns, whole beans, and then the baby carrots. And so I throw in, I guess I should measure it for you guys. I throw in about three cups, and I'm just gonna show you there. This is our three cup uh, glass bowl. 
They come two in a set with a lid. What I love about our glass bowls is obviously you can store with them, I can cook in them. Because they're glass, they're microwave, oven, dishwasher, freezer, and fridge safe. But all of our glass bowls as well have the measuring right onto the side. So again, because I have a lot going on today, we're gonna to make two different crusts, we're gonna make cherry pie, we're gonna make chicken pot pie. I have measuring things going on here all over the place. So because of that, alternatively, I can show you this too. So I've just filled it to the top, so there's about three cups, and then I'm just gonna add that while it's still warming. And I, again, the reason I like it frozen is that while it's thawing, it's getting a little bit of flavor, but it's adding just a tiny bit more moisture to the dish. So you can see there, it's not too thick, not too runny. It's pretty much the consistency that you would want for your pot pie. You know, when it comes to gravy for a pot pie, I don't want a lot of gravy. I want to taste what's left in there. I want to taste my meat. So again, different Easter, gonna eat outside, can't have everybody you want in, but that doesn't mean it has to be terrible either. So again, we're gonna make this a unique and different Easter. Last year, I think, I know me, we were pretty much in shock as far as what to do, where to go, what. Okay, this year it's like, well, this is the way it's gonna be. This is the way it's gonna be. This is the way it has been, so we're just gonna roll with it. So again, we're gonna make some chicken pot pie, you can do turkey, tofu, you know what, this is also really great, this would be really great for shrimp, or full out on vegetarian. And because of this pie crust that we're gonna make right now, it is vegan, so therefore, if you do have anybody with an alternative diet, this is amazing, it doesn't have any milk in it whatsoever, it doesn't have any uh, ingredients that vegans or vegetarians or anybody with a stomach issue wouldn't have an issue with. So. Again, we're gonna look at Lauren's cute little handwriting, and we start off with six scoops of Crisco, which is so cute. And this is, again, <laughs> this would make one big pie, both top and bottom, and it also has the uh, alternative to make cookies. Now, when I was growing up, my mom, like I said, my mom could make pie uh, sleeping. It was incredible. She never had to use a recipe, and she taught us how to feel the pie and crust, which I'm gonna try to do here, here on the TV, on the TV, on the screen. Um, so she never really, uh, it was very easy for her to constantly do it, but we had to have something called pie cookies. Um, and pie cookies were extra dough, that she would then roll out and would put butter and brown sugar and cinnamon and then cut it and bake it and we called them pie cookies which I will show you after because I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna have leftover dough so I too could make pie cookies. So when we say six cups of or six spoonfuls of Crisco it's approximately a half of the container of Crisco. So one half was already meant for a pie earlier. I had about a half of a tub left. So in Lauren's cute little handwriting, we could write a half of a container of Crisco, but it's the way we've always measured it. Now don't forget, if you do not get my newsletter, please let me know. I will add you to the subscription and you too can get these cute hints I might even make a copy of Lauren's cute little handwriting for everyone to just look at. So we've got six cups of Crisco, and then we are going to add four cups of flour. So what flour to use? For those who are bakers, uh, you've got your favorite, your standby favorite. This is my standby favorite when it comes to pies. Um, and the reason is I absolutely love the cake and pastry flour from Robin Hood because it has a bit of yeast already in it. It actually gives the pie crust an extra flakiness that I find. Um, it's not the flour that I would use to make right, so when I do make other uh, things like muffins and cookies and such, obviously I don't use this flour, I use differently. So if you do have your own brand, 
listen, stick with what you know. I'm the same when it comes to my regular flour has to be a certain brand. The Robin Hood cake and pastry for me for the pie dough is incredible. It is the same I'm gonna use for both sweet and savory. So this is our savory dish. For the sweet dish, when I do make the cherry pie dough, which I'm gonna show you quickly, this is the one I use as well. So we're going to use four cups of flour. I am going to measure it out with my simple measuring cups. A, they clip together, they're amazing. But what I love about them, for something as great as, as a flour, I can scoop it right in and because of the measuring cup itself, I have a full even flour that I can, I can pack right down. So I've got four cups. I do not bother sifting for my pie. Uh, other recipes I would sift, but for my pie flour itself, I don't bother to sift it. So I'm gonna use four packed cups of flour. I am just gonna leave the cup in there. And then we're going to use a teaspoon of salt, which I normally just eyeball, so I'm just gonna use a pinch of salt here. And then I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of very cold water. Now that is the key. For all you bakers out there, especially pie bakers, you know that the colder the water, the better. A lot of times my mom would actually be having her pie dough, um, the water be chilling with even ice cubes in it, depending on the time of year, because the colder, the better. So I'm gonna get three quarters of a cup of water. And I'm just gonna add that to the bowl, okay? So I'm adding all of that to the bowl. This is a pastry blender. For those of you who do not have one, it's incredible, it's amazing, um, and it sounds silly, but my mom never had one. My grandmother never used one, therefore my mom never did. Therefore, growing up, I didn't even know this existed. I remember once going to a friend's house and her mom using a fork. And I said to my mom, oh, that was interesting. And my mom said, well, it'll be like a pastry blender. I, I didn't know what a pastry blender was. Um, the Pamper Chef pastry blender is absolutely incredible and very, very convenient because it is very sharp, I will tell you. It's excellent, um, especially for those pie doughs. I'm trying to get some out just so you can see. It's great with the teeth there. So it's great for those recipes that you use butter, uh, especially cold butter. So when I do scones uh, and you're required to do cold butter, uh, it's excellent for that. So the key to a good pie dough is that you do not want to over knead it. So for those of you who, Jane, I know you love that pastry blender. Uh, you've had this pastry blender for quite a long time as well. Jane is a, a great pie maker and she's got a set of twin girls who get into the kitchen as much as she does and her husband as well. He's not the baker, he's the chef. That's like the all around family over there. Um, the key to pot, good pie dough is you do not want to over knead it. Um, and for those of you who might have logged on to my uh, bread video, I know I've done a couple bread videos. Bread is not one of those recipes where you have to worry about over kneading it. Um, it's one of those, the more you love your dough, the better. Pie dough is not like that. You actually want it to almost mix itself because over kneading will cause your dough to be very stiff it will cause your dough to be very unflavorful and it will not uh, cook up flaky. And again, oh my God, if I throw one more thing on this counter and floor, uh, again, that's not the kind of pie that we're creating. So what I'm doing right now is essentially just mixing it up. I want it to be a little bit wet but not completely stuck to your fingers. Now again, for those of you who are watching my, um, my bread, rest, uh, bread video, my hands were completely clean. For a dough, you want it to be a little bit wet. You want it to be sticking a little bit together, mixing itself up. 
over kneading will create that uh, hard dough that no one is a fan of, okay? So what I'm doing now with the last little bit here is I'm essentially wanting it to stick to itself, okay? And I should note that I am using the Pampered Chef glass bowl on purpose so A, you guys can see it inside, and B, it's a really great size for a double uh, pie dough, okay? So you can see there what that dough looks like, not too sticky on my hands, sticking itself together, but not, I haven't kneaded it too much to create that hard stickiness. So there are two different ways that we could roll this dough. I'm gonna move this stuff over here to show you. So I've got my pastry mat on the counter already. And of course I've made yet another mess. Okay. I've got my pastry mat going on here. Now, this recipe makes, like I said, both a top and a bottom pie for two. Or, at my house, a whole pie, both top and bottom, and pie cookies. Um, so I'm gonna cut this dough in half. Okay, and Today, because we are making sweet and savory, I am actually going to be using a bigger pie plate. So this is the gorgeous Pampered Chef glazed pie plate. So it's the only way that the pie plate comes anymore from Pampered Chef. Uh, so nice to go from oven to table. Uh, because it's stone inside, it can be cut right in it. It's gorgeous, and it's a gorgeous deep 12 inch. So it's nine by 13 by 23 inches. All of the measurements are on the back of it. Um, and just an FYI, that is actually not available currently. All The only stones we have available right now are the large bar pan, the small bar pan, and the pizza stone. But FYI, I just want to let you know that pie plate is on my wish list. Oh good, Carol, just want to let you and all of those out there know that the all of our stones are becoming available at the end of April. So we were just promised this week that stones will be coming available again at the end of April. So again, there's a light at the end of this tunnel. Uh, we need to find the rainbows and unicorns where we can. That to me, it was like, a there's a few things a few of us are waiting for, like the air fryer, uh, like the new mandolin. Those things are still not available right now, but it's lovely to see that the stones are coming back. And that's why I'm talking about how amazing this pie plate is today. Um, again, so now I'm going to cut the dough again, okay? And I'm gonna roll it out here on the mat. So. I will use a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick to my, it won't stick to my roller. And for this, I'm actually going to be using um, the big marble rolling pin. Uh, you can use whatever rolling pin you have in your life. My mom is still using my Nana's rolling pin. So Nana has Nana's rolling pin. And I'm just gonna roll out my dough and you don't want it too thick and too thin. Now I'm noticing my dough is a little sticky, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of flour as I'm rolling it. And again, because we don't wanna knead our crust too much, this is the opportunity to be adding the flour as you're rolling versus the feel of it while you're stirring it or mixing it, sorry, and creating uh, anything that could make your dough a little bit tough. So it's a great opportunity. You can see there the dough is kind of stuck to my pin. That's when I know that I just need to add a little bit more flour. I can add flour to both my rolling pin and my dough. I love 
when I'm rolling dough, whether it be sugar cookies, gingerbread cookies, dough of any kind, pie dough, the feel of it on my hands, allowing me to know if I need to add more flour to it. You don't want your dough, your pastry, to be too sticky, but again, we also don't want it to be tough and to not have that beautiful flakiness. So when you roll it out on the pastry mat, it also has the measurements on the mat, allowing you to see what size you have. So this is the 12 inch that I've rolled it to. It's a bit sticky on my pan, so I'm just gonna use my nylon lifter, and I'm just gonna take my pie plate there, and I'm gonna add my crust to my pan. Now, in my opinion, a good crust, a nice flaky crust, might actually fall apart as you're lifting it, like mine did. And that's okay too, because this gives me the opportunity to build it out where I need it to be. And it's not the top of the pie where we really want the cuteness or the, the prettiness of your lattice or any of those things there. This is actually the main guts of your pie. So your dough doesn't need to be as pretty there. So I'm allowing myself that grace to just simply put my dough in my plate. Now, because of the pot pie in this version, I'm not worrying about pre-cooking this dough. Now, if I was going to pre-cook this dough, which I'm going to pre-cook um, something like, say, a lemon meringue pie, that's when I would want to poke holes in this or sliver, uh, put some slivers in it and then put it in the oven first to pre-cook. But because we are adding a, a savory pie and it's all gonna cook at once, I'm not worrying about this at all. So I'm actually just got my pie dough laid in there, not having to worry about anything. I don't need to oil it or anything. Uh, very simply with the Crisco, the flour, the salt, a little bit of water has created this easy, simple pie dough. And now I'm just going to take my chicken pot pie center that I've done. So I've got the chicken, a little bit of gravy, I've got some green beans, corn, and peas, and I'm just going to add that into this dish. And you can see there that it's got a nice, it smells amazing, but it also has a nice movement in there. So it's not too runny. Uh, because I have just pulled the chicken apart and chopped it up a little bit with the manual food processor, it kind of did like a pre-shredded chicken, so it's gorgeous the way that the chicken has spread itself. And I love chunky green beans and carrots in mine. And again, you can easily use what's in your fridge and toss it in there. Or if this is gonna be a leftover alternative, that's when you throw whatever vegetables you have left over into your gravy mix. I have also done this where whatever gravy I had left over, again, I've warmed it up, I've thrown in whatever meat with it, and then added whatever vegetables. That's like the surprise pot pie. But tonight to create something this beautiful, it's simply that. Now, obviously my next step, I'm gonna roll the top, I'm gonna to slice it, and we're gonna put it into the oven. But we're gonna move on to the savory, or sorry, the sweet, um, the sweet pie. And a different, a different dough recipe. So again, this is what's left. You can see there on my hands, really, really easy, and I've even got enough dough for pie cookies, or alternatively, I just want you to know, uh, the size of the pie plate, uh, Barb, is nine by 13. Uh, all the dimensions are on the bottom. I can put it in there uh, in, in the newsletter as well, the exact dimensions of that pie plate, but it is essentially a nine by 13 pan, and quite deep, I think it's 23 inches deep. It's amazing. It makes a beautiful savory pie. Um, I just want you to know too, this dough does freeze beautifully. Uh, before rolling it out, I suggest you fully thaw it in the fridge and then take it out about 40 to 45 minutes before you're gonna roll it. Just again, so it kind of gets to be room temperature because obviously a freezer is gonna add some moisture to it. So it's an amazing dough to do that, but I will take some photos afterwards of our beautiful pot pie. 
So the next pie that I'm creating, I've actually already started it and put it into the fridge, is a sweet pie. So I have, I gave Dave the option today of what kind of pie he would want. I mean, we're having pie and pie. But I wanted to, again, I wanted to show a different way that we can be making some unique and different pies this year and showing some different pie recipes. So he chose cherry. And uh, I don't have any regular cherries in the house with the exception of frozen cherries. So for any of you who have not bought a frozen cherry, now I normally have these cherries in the house because I love to make um, ice cream. So I do a nice cream, which I can do in my Mick Dreamy blender. I make a nice cream, which I can make in my ice cream maker. I take uh, Greek yogurt and I add some cherries and a little bit of honey to sweeten it up and it's a nice uh, tart alternative to an ice cream. Uh, obviously, cherries are amazing, amazing for your diet. Cherries are amazing for those of you who might be suffering from things like uh, arthritis, uh, for suffering from um, gout. It's a nice way to help flush different, um, different things that you might be suffering from. So we always have cherries in our house. Uh, because of that, I can actually do some really great desserts. So I took five cups of cherries. Yes, even on ice cream, yes, but I do make ice cream with it. So what I did is I took five cups of cherries, I took a teaspoon of vanilla, I took two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, which I squeezed with my my lemon, my zester, no, this is not a zester, my lemon, this is a, oh my gosh, citrus press, goodness gracious. I squeezed my lemon, two tablespoons with my citrus press, and then I added a half of a cup of brown sugar. I kind of like a tart um, dessert. I don't need a lot of sugar, so that has a half of a cup of brown sugar, and that's it. Now, uh, I will let you know, and I'm gonna just add it, my last and secret ingredient, and I found this recipe, like I said, in Tennessee about three years ago now, is you add some moonshine to it. Now, for those of you who might have small children or are not a fan of alcohol at all, you can omit this, obviously, then I would suggest you use maybe a almond extract or uh, an extra tablespoon of vanilla. Um, if you do have a pure vanilla, like uh, Pampered Chef's Madagascar vanilla, for example, you would use uh, a half of a tablespoon because it is double, um, a double potency. It does call for vanilla already, but I'm going to add the two tablespoons of moonshine. Oh. So I'm going to add the two tablespoons of moonshine to this recipe. Now keep in mind when I do cook it on the stove, the alcohol does cook out once you do cook it, but it just gives it that beautiful flavor. And you can, if you want, throw in some of the extra cherries. Oh, it smells so good. Um, you know what? I'm gonna add two cherries as well. Why not? So I'm just gonna stir that up a little bit and you are going to cook this over a medium to high heat for 30, about, uh, sorry, it took all in total about 20 minutes, um, all in total 20 minutes just to thicken that up. But again, it's a lower sugar, nice kick, different flavored cherry pie than you would normally do, okay? so. With that, I'm gonna want a savory or a sweet, uh, like a dream country moonshine. It's true, it's true, Ange. Mo moonshine and, and cherry pie, it's too, too good to be true. Uh, like I said, when I found this recipe, I was like, score. So this is a different recipe that I'm gonna quickly make for you. Um, it is actually all done into the mix master and I've already pre-done one half so that you can see it. And I'm also going to show you what I have done. The recipe calls for one and a half cups of, uh, one and a half cups of flour. 
It asks for your butter to be very cold. So what you would do is you would take your butter and you would, you need uh, three quarters of a cup of butter cut into chunks, okay? And all of this is going to be done in your mix master. So I'm adding a cup and a half of flour. I'm adding uh, some salt. I am adding the butter and then I'm gonna mix it. And then I'm gonna add just a tiny bit again of ice cold water and let that mix. Now what for this recipe, what you wanna do is you essentially want it to look, before you add the water, and I would show you right now, except that I left the butter now in the freezer for the last 40 minutes, so now it's like really cold. So I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes. Um, but what you wanna do is the mix master itself, the mixer, if you do have one, you're gonna use the paddle on your mixer. Everything is done. You don't have to worry about your hands getting dirty. This is a no fail recipe. Uh, again, it's not vegan friendly, and that's why I didn't talk about it at, at the first half. So when you add the flour and the salt, then you add the butter, and with the paddle, you're gonna mix it. It's almost gonna give it like a crumbly. You want the butter essentially to have um, completely broken up into like little chunks and to be completely covered with flour. Then you're gonna add the quarter of a cup of ice cold water very, very slowly until it gets to that same formed mixture that I showed with the last dough. Then it asks you to put it into the fridge for an hour or so, which I have thankfully pre-done. I've just got mine wrapped here in beeswax. Okay, and you can see here, again, really, really easy to use. It's gonna be a little harder to roll out in the sense that it's not so sticky. So again, you're gonna to wanna to put some flour onto the bottom of your, of your mat, and you're just gonna roll that out. Again, over rolling could create your dough to be, to be tough. So you just want to be a little more gentle, using your hands to kind of give it that feel. Again, I'm just gonna put some flour here in the bottom and roll that out. This recipe, like I mentioned, is no fail. Really, really simple. And really great to, for those non-bakers out there who make, might not have ever made dough or who are deathly afraid of dough. Some people are absolutely afraid to make dough. Um, this would be a recipe that I would suggest you should try first. Uh, again, for those who might have an alternative um, or an, an issue with butter, you might want to try um, a vegan alternative. There are some great vegan butter alternatives out there that you'd be able to make with this. But this recipe is very, very simple. Dough is always a lot easier to do when it is colder. And because of the butter, it is making the dough easier to roll in the sense because it is cold. Now, you can see there the difference in the last dough I made versus this one. This is also the opportunity to be able to, I'm just gonna quickly show you guys these cherries. You can see there the steam's coming off. I'm just gonna shut that off because I've cooked the moonshine there. So the moonshine's just gonna give it a really nice flavor, but the alcohol is now cooked off. So I am using alternatively now a small stone pan. Now this one unfortunately isn't available anymore. This is from, I wanna say 15 plus years ago, because we used to have green, then we came out with it in burgundy, 
and then they completely omitted anything this small now. So any small eight inch uh, pie plate is going to work for this recipe. Uh, this recipe can be, again, this is one that you can cut in half and do two pies. Um, I'm just gonna see if I could do that so that you guys could see here how the dough is because I have was going to make another okay and we're just going to quickly cut some lattice in a second so I'm just going to roll that out a little bit more just so that it's a little bit thinner and again for this one I am going to cook it completely with I don't have to pre-cook this dough at all because I'm adding the cherries that are pre-cooked. So together they can cook. So the sweet and the savory pie can be cooked together today. Rolling that out, taking my pie plate. I'm again putting that in. You can see there that this way I've allowed myself the opportunity to put the dough in. It's not breaking apart. Two different doughs, very similar recipe. One's butter, one's Crisco. One has to be kept into the fridge at least an hour before cooking. One is roll it out and good to go. One and done. You can see there, beautiful how easy that was. I'm just gonna add the cherries to the bottom of the pan. The cherries are already warm. The vanilla with the moonshine gives it a gorgeous, rich smelling pie right here. I, like I said, don't like it too sweet, but I do like a good tart cherry. Just gonna use my scraper and get every last bit of cherry in there. I will as well pass this recipe on to you guys. Love it. Like I said, omit the moonshine. You can see there the pie. It's a nice, good sized pie. Now, I know I've kept you guys quite a while with this video today. I'm just going to quickly show you how you might want to make lattice. So, again, you want to roll your dough out. Obviously, it would be together, but you want to roll your dough out. You want to take your pizza cutter and cut about an inch to an inch and a half of your strips. Okay, I know a lot of you bakers out there are familiar with lattice. It was actually one of the fun things I taught the girls when they were little. They actually, with their little hands, were really good at making the lattice because they were so good, it was like braiding to them. So you would just simply lay it across your pie, laying the next one down, lifting, and continuing on there. Continuing, let me just show you one more. Again, a great opportunity to get those little ones in your kitchen, in your life, into your kitchen. Again, lifting, braiding, lifting, braiding, Gorgeous lattice pie on the way. Guys, I'm sorry to keep you so long today. I know that this is a different Easter for all of us. You know, what can we do but find the rainbows and unicorns? Listen, if pie isn't rainbows and unicorns, I don't know what is. So today we've got a chicken pot pie or whatever pot pie version you wanna make. You've got a beautiful savory and sweet pie that you can serve together. Call it pie day, call it pie Easter, whatever you need to do. Your quick cooker is here for some great and different recipes as well. Hit me up if you want something like how to make scalloped potatoes. Scalloped potatoes in four minutes, start to finish. That's cutting your potatoes to the suckers being cooked. Right here in your Instant Pot quick cooker. How to do your Easter eggs this year. We used to do our Easter eggs in our quick cooker. I would pre-cook them, the girls would decorate them, I would peel them afterwards. We would have deviled eggs for our Easter. That would be all tie-dyed inside because the girls decorated them. Therefore, I had dinner done 
and a craft for the kids. There's some great and different unique things that we can do this Easter to make the best of it. Totally hit me up for some other ideas that you might have and happy Easter to everyone. Or for those of you who are not celebrating Easter this weekend, happy Passover, Kwanzaa, and also uh, those of you who might call this fake Easter as it's Greek Orthodox in the next five weeks or so. But enjoy the weekend, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your week. Hit me up if you need some other Easter ideas. It's Pie Easter.